Hey guys, this is Jason Wang. I'm back with a, another leak code question. So today we're going to be talking about some more linked list questions. So this one is called rotate lists. Pretty simple concept. Given the head of a linked list, rotate the list to the right by k places. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a harder version of. There's another question called rotate an array, which is a lot easier than this, but this is using a linked list. So. We've already talked about them a lot, but just a really quick review. Pretty much a linked list is a collection of nodes and each node has usually two characteristics, right? A value and then a reference to the next node in the list. There, the node really ends when the next reference is null and the head value like is represents the whole list, right? Because if you have a reference to the next value, if they're all connected, you have the reference to the whole list, right? So pretty cool data structure here, but they can be tricky to work with in some situations. So let's kind of start breaking this down. So in example one, we have this list, one, two, three, four, five, and we want to rotate it twice because our K input here is two. So we want to turn one, two, three, four, five into four, five, one, two, three. Okay, great. So my initial reaction when I saw this problem was to overwrite things. So start with one and then you push one to here, two to here, four to here, and then five to here. Right, so you like overwrite the two with the one, overwrite the three with the two, overwrite the four with the three. And you do that as many times as you want to rotate, which I think could work, but it takes a really long time because you have to pass through the entire linked lists every single time um, you want to rotate it, right? So if K is equal to seven, you're going to rotate it. You're going to pass through the seven times, which is going to be pretty expensive. So then what I realized is in reality, a linked list, when we rotate it, all we're really doing is connecting all the, the edges or the nodes, sorry, and then cutting it at a different spot. So if you think about it, five, one, two, three, four is just one, two, three, four, five with this edge from four to five moved from five to one, right? So if we were to link this whole list, make it almost circular. So if we had one going from two to three to four to five back to one, well, all we can, all we needed to do really would be to just cut it somewhere, right? So if we want to get it to rotate two, all we really need to do is just cut it, cut this edge right here so that it starts with four, five, one, two, three. So if we can figure out where to cut it, we only need to pass the list once and then go from there, right? But before we do that, we need to figure out how many times we're rotating it. So you might say the number of times we're rotating it is K but we don't know the limit to K here because it could be somewhere from two times 10 to the ninth, which is what, two billion? It's very, very big input. And if we get two billion for a list like this, that has a size of five, we're really just not gonna rotate it at all because every five iterations this rotates will return back to the original position of the list, right? If you can imagine one goes to here, that's so one jump would be from here, two jumps would be to here, three, four, five. So every five, rotations, we'd return to our original state. So if we got K is two times 10 to the ninth and we perform whatever operation, right? We have to like rotate it 10 to the nine times or parse through it 10 to the nine times to figure out where we need to stop when we don't actually need to. So all we need to do is figure out the remainder of like how many times we're really gonna rotate and I'll do it by doing this, right? So first we need to find the size of the array. So basic, basic link list stuff. Um, you can't just pull the size. It's not really stored anywhere usually. So what I want to do is iterate through every single node in the list and pretty much just count. Why I have this list node called last, you'll figure out, I'll show you in a little bit, right? So first you add a really easy edge case check because the number of nodes in the list could be zero. So if head is equal to null, if you're given a null input, if you rotate something that's empty, it's still going to be empty. So we're just going to turn null here. Alternatively, we want to, again, this is basic how you iterate, basically how you iterate through a linked list. So while current.next is not equal to null, you want to say current is equal to current.next, and then we're going to iterate size. So at this point, the size should be finalized, right? Size is finalized. We know exactly what the size is. So the actual number of rotations is like, going to be size to mod k, right? So if you look at this example, 
if you're not familiar with your modulus operator, pretty much what it does is just says like, what is the remainder after you divide, right? So in this case, um, two mod five would be two, right? Because you can't divide. There's no fives if into two and you have a remainder of two. And the reason we do that is like, imagine if we had 22, rather than having to go through this 22 times, you're really just rotating things to, to the right twice, right? So that's why we do this, this, this line here. So now that we know where or how many times we need to rotate, one thing I want to do is like I was saying, we want to like create this circular pattern. So we want to also make sure that our last node, which in this case is five, is now linked to one. And how I'm going to be doing that is this while loop will stop once current.next, the reference will be null, which will happen when we get to the last node. So current will stop at the last node. So we can just say current or last is equal to current. And then last.next is equal to head. So imagine now there's a, a path from five to one. So it's made a circuit, right? Cool. So now that we have that, looking at this, how I would visually go about doing this is we just need to change the head, right? So our head used to be one. If we want to rotate it to the right twice, we just need to move the head backwards two spots, right? So if you can imagine like going from one to five to four, and that would be our new head and that, that would get our input correct, right? However, linked lists, if they're singly linked lists, which is what this is, they don't have a previous reference, right? Some, these things are called doubly linked lists, will have a reference to next and previous. So it'll allow you to go backwards, like traverse backwards. This you can only traverse in one direction, right? Which is kind of a bummer because we can't do that really simple, you know, go back K spots and find the new head and then cut it before then. What we have to do is instead is like figure out a way to get backwards by going forward. Because this is a circle, you can get to any position by going forward, right? Because you'll eventually converge or you eventually, you know, circle back. So we can't do the left rotations. So we can't do the right rotations, but we can do into left rotations is equal to size minus one rotation, right? So if we can't go left two spots, we can go right size minus two spots and we'll still end up at the same node, right? So that's why we have left rotations with size minus number rotations here. And then again, very similar kind of thing here. So while left rotations is greater than zero, we want to do a couple things. We want to move the head, right? So head is equal to head dot next. So in this case, just to give you an example, K is equal to two, left rotations would be equal to five minus two, which would be three. So head would move forward three spots. So our new head would be looking at node four, which is what we want, which is great. But not only do we have to move the head, we have to make sure that we're cutting the edge before the head, right? So we also have to keep track of what the previous node is. In this case, we can't, again, we just know it would be really nice to have like a previous reference, but we don't. But what we can do is if you remember this last or this current node or the last, both of them reference the last node, right? So we know that this current node is already sort of like the de facto previous node that we're tracking. So why don't we just iterate that along with the head? So I'm going to use current just for clarity here, current.next and then left rotations minus minus. So we can, you know, go down and eventually break out of this loop. So what's going to happen is Head's gonna move up three spots, one, two, three, and then previous is gonna move up three spots, right? One, two, three. So now our last node is gonna be three. And then we wanna make sure three is the last node. So we wanna cut off any next it has. So we just say current.next is equal to null. Then we return the head. So remember when you return one node, that's the head of the node, it will return all of them because they're all contain references to the next one, right? So let's go ahead and run this code. Okay, I messed up somewhere. Output five one two three four expected four five one two three. Okay. Um rotations. So int size is equal to one. Last equal to head, has equal to null, return null, current down next design for null, current down x plus plus. Int number rotations equal to size mod k. Okay. Yeah, that's that's dumb. I should be K mod size. Size mod K would make sense because in this case, like um, five mod two would be three, 
and it should be two mod five. Right? So let's try this again. Okay, sweet. We submit it. Okay, great. So it runs really quickly, which is awesome, right? Because we're essentially just doing one pass of the whole linked list to get the size. And then we do another partial pass to find the new head, right? Which in worst, worst case scenario is 2n, which is still linear time, which is good. Alternatively, if you overwrite everything, it will still be linear, but it would be like kn, which is like the number of rotations times the the size of the, the linked list, which could get pretty rough depending on how you do it, right? And I think this code wise is a lot simpler and you avoid the risk of overwriting any data and like not being able to go back. So I still think this is a better solution. In terms of memory, um, what are we storing here? So we're storing a new list node, like two list node variables, some integer variables. Um, so nothing too crazy, honestly. And I think something that's constant, constant space because we're not using any new variables. But that being said, um, that's, that's, that's this question of the week or lead code question. It's pretty simple. But as you can see, linked lists are really funky and you can do some really cool things with them, but you have to be really comfortable with how they work. They're not a complex data structure, but they are something that's pretty non-intuitive. So we're hopefully going to be doing more linked list questions later on. But until next time, that has been the tech question or the legal question. And join us next time where we'll continue working on some practice C code questions for your interview process. All right. Take it easy, guys.